What is up guys? Welcome to this video. This one's going to be about manipulation and anger. So if you guys are new here, my name is Lucas and I like to talk about self-actualization, self-help, personal growth, consciousness, mind, emotions, etc. So I've changed my setup a bit. I've got a whiteboard, some bookshelves, move stuff around. And I thought it would be extremely helpful to begin writing stuff on this board so that it's easier for people to understand. So I drew what is called a feedback loop. And that sounds kind of bland and boring, but <laughs> it's very useful for understanding all sorts of mechanisms and in this specific context, emotional mechanisms. So here we have the relationship between manipulation and anger in the form of a feedback loop. So it starts off with not getting what you want. Okay, this is basically number one. And I want you to think about any time you didn't get something that you want, something very small to something very large. Let's say you wanted your computer to act in a specific way. I think we all get pretty frustrated when technology starts to act a little bit strange. So your computer was acting up and it didn't do what you want it to do. So you got a little bit frustrated, <laughs> which was anger. Frustration is a form of anger. And quickly, you wanted to take control of the situation in order to get what it is that you want, whether it's turn the computer on and off or click and spam buttons a million times. So that led to action, control, or force. And depending on the outcome of this, it either led to you not getting what you want again, more anger, more force, or you got what you want. And then this whole thing, this whole mechanism inside of you shut down. And specifically, I want to talk about this mechanism in relationship to other people, because this is really where it gets tough. This is really something I have observed over and over again in myself and in absolutely everyone around me. Now, it's natural for things to not go your way. And it's natural to get angry at that as well. But what is rather artificial and where problems really begin to arise is how we relate to that. And we have evolved over a period of time and our emotions, our behaviors, our thoughts, etc., are deeply geared towards our survival. So anger, in part, is a mechanism that lets us know when something is not going our way and we have to step in and change the situation to make it go our way, which sounds fantastic. We like it when things go our way and we don't like it when things don't go our way. But it's not that fantastic <laughs> because when you are in relationship to another person, this mechanism very often screws up those relationships, whether it's parents to their kids, kids to their parents, intimacy, and even friendships. We want people to do very specific things. We want them to help us when we need help or give us something when we want it. And quite often, when we don't get that specific thing that we want, anger quickly arises because this is just the system. This is the natural sort of conditioning of, of men. We don't get what we want, so we get angry. And anger motivates action, control, or force, which are all forms of manipulation. There's nothing wrong with, you know, something not going, going your way. Like you drop a glass, for example. Something didn't go your way. You didn't want to drop the glass. It broke. So you cleaned it up and you got a bit frustrated and you, know, you cleaned it up. There's nothing wrong with that. But when 
you're in relationship to another person and this mechanism starts playing out, it very rarely goes well. And if it does go well, it's basically, it's a fluke. And in many cases, it wasn't healthy either. There was some sort of part of the person who was manipulating that was hurting and another person odds are allowed themselves to be manipulated by it so one person is pushing themselves onto another person's boundaries and the other person is allowing that to happen they're not seeing that someone is actually violating their boundaries now this mechanism if you observe it in your own life, you will realize that you do a lot of this. You do a lot of manipulation, more than you would probably like to notice. And if we begin to consciously think like, yeah, you know, I don't really want to manipulate the people I like or maybe anyone for that matter. But for some reason, I still find myself getting angry and then wanting to control situations to an unhealthy degree wanting to take action and force myself onto other people. And that's the reason why we continuously do this is, you know, for a variety of reasons. Maybe we have to do some shadow work. Maybe we have to do a bit of psychotherapy. Maybe we just have to see this whole thing playing out and begin relating to other people, reality, our own self agenda, our emotions differently. Maybe a bit of all of these has to be done. The key to ending this cycle is awareness of the cycle. But the thing is, is awareness is curative, but if you're in relationship to another person, it can get extremely difficult because not everyone is actually interested in ending this cycle. Many people are stuck very deeply in this cycle. Odds are you are in fact one of them. You use manipulation to get things that you want quite often. This is sort of how relationships are nowadays for human, not just nowadays, but this is what they have been. They've been loaded with conflict, force, making other people jealous, aggression, all sorts of sort of shady tactics to get what it is that you want and some people are extremely hard to deal with i'm pretty sure we've all experienced a time where someone else was hard to deal with and you know what where we were pretty hard to deal with where we were being stuck in this cycle a bit closed-minded and <laughs> didn't really want to look at it and really didn't want to change now there's a lot of contexts and different people who can watch this video in different situations. So I can't tell you exactly what to do with your life and how to do it. That's up to you because I don't know what it's like for you. But I will mention some scenarios in which this plays out and what you should do if you're inclined to do it, if you want to. Perfect example is let's say there's a girl and her boyfriend abuses her. Okay, and this guy has no intention on looking at this cycle. That's just not what he cares about. He doesn't have the level of consciousness to do that. In that particular case, you should definitely leave. Okay, it's probably a lot safer to leave. But let's say that someone in a relationship, boy or girl, is being manipulated by their significant other. And their significant other is a pretty fair person. They like to grow. They like to be more self-aware. They like to change their behaviors. And they care about uh, growing in the relationship, for example. It can be very helpful to point out this mechanism and to also be radically honest about when you are doing this. Because this is something everyone does. Now, there are a lot of different kinds of relationships. There's intimate, there's friendships, there's coworkers, parents, etc. If you are in relationship to someone who's open, they're fairly intelligent, and 
you you can show them this or let them know in a compassionate way, not in a judgmental way, but in a loving and compassionate and understanding way that this is what they're doing. It's very beneficial and can very deeply help clean up the relationship. But you have to have the discernment to know when to do it. You have to know because I can't tell you exactly what to do and when. It's too complicated. There's too many variables. There's too many different contexts. If you're in relationship to someone else, a friend or whoever, significant other, who <laughs> is going to abuse you and manipulate you, they don't care about changing, it's deeply wise to leave. You know, I shouldn't really have to say that. But what I'm trying to get at with what I'm saying is how complicated relationship actually is with other people and how much unconscious shadow there actually is. Because like I've said a few times now, this is something we all do. We all do this. But how many people would really like to admit to themselves that, yeah, I'm manipulating my loved ones. How, like that's not an easy thing to be honest to yourself about. So you have to pick the appropriate time and the appropriate context to let people know. You have to be able to read the other person's state, their feelings and their intentions and know when to bring this up, for example. And not only other people, but yourself. Your number one goal with this video should be to clean this up from yourself because you're not going to go out there and clean up the world. You're not going to go out there and force this onto other people because now you're manipulating. You want something, you're not getting it, <laughs> you get angry so you force it. This is a really complicated matter. I've put it very simply for you to understand. I've put it honestly dangerously simple. simple. Uh, dangerously uh, simply, I mean. It's too easy to look at this and think you're truly getting it. It's another thing to actually clean it up to a significant degree in yourself, totally change how you relate to people for the most part, and actually feel this whole thing in a situation playing out. Feel what's happening when you're doing this or when someone else is doing it to you. Feels very tense, feels very constricted, feels very contracted, feels like a lot of suffering, feels like a lot of discomfort for the most part. It's not a pleasant situation to be manipulating or to, you know, be manipulated. It just isn't. And when you are being manipulated, you can identify this pattern for one example of being manipulated. We use a lot of emotions to manipulate. This is just anger. When you can identify that you're being manipulated, it's authentic of you to stand up for yourself and to not let people push themselves on you and to violate your boundaries. You'll find that it's deeply authentic of you. You might be scared to do it because you don't know what the consequences of it are, but you will find that it's authentic and actually powerful of you to be able to Identify this playing out in other people and yourself and to actually be able to stand up for yourself. And a lot of people have a lot of trouble doing that. One, because it's kind of scary. You don't know what can happen. Uh, you don't know what other people are going to think about you. And two, they don't even know that this exists. They haven't identified this mechanism in their relationships, in their own psyche. They haven't seen what they're doing. They don't get that they are spending a lot of time simply manipulating people and getting <laughs> manipulated. I plan to make a lot more videos on manipulation in the future. Quick recap though. I'm not responsible for anything that happens to you when you're using this information. You need the wisdom to discern between when, for example, you can tell someone that they're doing this versus when it's not a good idea to, and who you hang around. For example, I would recommend hanging out and being in relationship to people who are wise enough to look at this. That's the ideal person. 
people who are willing to grow, become self-aware, clean up their shadow, things like that. And like I said, the most important thing is cleaning this up within yourself. Because this is a massive way that you get what you want. Over human evolutionary history, we have had to do some very brutal things to get what we want. As we all know, history for mankind is not exactly sunshine, flowers, and rainbows. There was a lot of manipulation, war, genocide, rape, very short life expectancies, slavery, illnesses, all sorts of crap. And the stuff that we had to do to survive that wasn't exactly charming. It wasn't exactly the most charismatic and charming of us. And we have a lot of these same mechanisms within us. Sort of tribal warfare, tribal identities, all sorts of manipulative tactics for getting things that we want. The difference though, is that for the most part, a lot of people are in positions where they can clean this stuff up, become aware of it, and rewire a lot of these mechanisms. That's not an easy thing to do by any means. But we are in positions where this is possible. And I know that's true because I've done a lot of work on that. So we, for the most part, many people are in positions where they can become conscious, they can raise their consciousness, and they can clean themselves up. Which, <laughs> which is deeply important for living a good life. Because by definition, if you're doing this, you're not really living a good life. You're stuck in a cycle of suffering for the most part. Because manipulation, this whole thing means you're not satisfied with the present moment to have to manipulate it. It means that there's parts of you that need examining, which none of this information should be used in a judgmental way. It's not that this guy is manipulating, that guy's manipulating, mankind is terrible. That's not the point. The point is that we had to do this to survive. We had to do this to get to this point. But now we're at a turning point in our sort of evolutionary history where we can clean this up, where we can be a deeply conscious species. But only if we're willing to confront our bullshit can we actually do that. All our manipulative tactics, all our deception, our self-deception, our lack of honesty, our total willingness to just not care about what's true in favor of getting what we want. We can, start to, we can start to move past our sort of tribal identities, liberal versus conservative. We can begin to move past these things. We can move into higher patterns and structures and stages of consciousness that allow us to deeply understand the worldviews and systems and mechanisms that are creating the world and allowing it to function in the way that it functions instead of just being victim and being an unconscious animal and constantly being stuck in our lowest impulses we can not only rise above that but we can even appreciate what these impulses impulses have done for us and the way to quote unquote rise above that is not by ignoring it but by fully looking at it feeling it embracing it and becoming fully aware of it having the theory of it and seeing it play out in experience as well and then slowly rewiring yourself so that you're more conscious you're more conscious you're more understanding you're more selfless you're more loving you're more compassionate you're more curious you're Overall, you feel safe, you feel calm, you feel confident, you feel present, you feel patient, you're persistent, but not persistent in a way where you're pushing something on someone, you're persistent in a way where you're continuously willing to clean yourself up. So mankind is a very interesting animal. <laughs> we have a lot of crap. I'm sure we're all familiar with crap in mankind. Look at the news, you're not going to find it. I mean, <laughs> you are going to find it very quickly. So we have a lot of crap. But on the opposite end of the spectrum, we have a large potential to clean this up and create something fantastic. And what I'm talking about is not some sort of idealist, idealistic, utopia, airy-fairy crap. What I'm talking about is very real. This is extremely real. This is 
how humans are evolving. As we psychologically evolve, we become more conscious, more understanding of all sorts of different paradigms and worldviews and people and why they are the way they are and what's driving behavior. And we become more conscious of systems and the role that systems and mechanisms play in life and how deeply they govern our way of life, whether we know it or not. And we have the potential to rewire and change them, relate to them in different ways, and to actually love them and see how they were important for our survival, but in many cases, they're just simply not needed anymore. And in many cases, we should actually be <laughs> somewhat thanking this, because this got us to this point where we can sort of let go of this. Kind of like diapers, you know? Diapers are literally full of shit. And then at one point, you don't have to crap your pants anymore. And then you outgrow diapers. Think of this like diapers. You have to be full of crap. <laughs> and then you can learn to clean yourself up and you don't have to be full of it anymore. <laughs> so if you want a cute little analogy, there's one for you. But other than that, uh, take it easy. I have a lot more videos planned like this uh, with the whiteboard. So it's so easy to understand. Uh, if you guys have any uh, questions at all, let me know in the comment section below. I have a book to recommend. I strategically placed it here. It's this one right here. Bringing your shadow out of the dark, breaking free from the breaking free from the hidden forces that drive you by Robert Augustus Masters. This is a fantastic book. This is a genius book for understanding stuff like this. So other than that, hope you guys enjoyed and take it easy.